Hello and welcome everyone. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. Today we're going to discuss the traditional debt monetary system as we know it currently and the difference between that and our liquidity system that we're employing on our ecosystem. Let's understand that money and financial systems have been a struggle for hundreds of years. Mankind has tried many times to come with a solution to find a way how we can have a monetary system that can keep up an economy and sustain it and preferably it should be equal to all citizens of the world. But that has failed miserably. So the whole banking thing started back in 1694 when the Bank of England uh, created, actually they're the pioneers of a central bank. And based on their model, most of modern central banks have been based upon this model. So this is over 330 years of experimenting, trying to find a way how to create a monetary system. So this has been something very serious that many countries have been trying to wrap their head around this and find a way how to successfully create a monetary system that is sustainable and that will retain a striving economy. And especially the most important that the global citizens will not be the victims, but will be benefiting from that ecosystem. And this chart right here just shows you Again, we are in a debt-based economy. And since then, you see how the dollar just kept losing its purchasing power tremendously. And if you ask yourself why, what was the causes? Obviously, it was the rising inflation in money supply. And of course, the more inflation, the less purchasing power the dollar had. We should now fast forward and relate what we've gathered now so far with the crypto space because we're here in the crypto industry. The blockchain technology is supposed to give us a brand new opportunity to do things right. The technology is here for us and it's a very competitive space right now that whoever comes with the proper strategy and the right tokenomics and mechanisms and ecosystem, they'll be leading the pack because as we saw, all of this has been in the works for over 300 years. I believe the technology is here now for us to have a solid system that we can put together. And the beautiful thing about the blockchain technology, it's not restricted to borders, it's borderless. So everybody can participate, the entire globe. And this is what sets the blockchain technology apart. So instead of focusing on nations, this is now everybody can participate in this global value mechanism. With that said, let's identify the four challenges that we face right now in the crypto space as it relates to us. So the first one, like we see here, what did we learn? We see that inflation is a major issue. So inflation causes loss of purchasing power and also in money supply. So inflation is one of the issues. The second thing is liquidity. Liquidity is key. Liquidity is very important. Thirdly, this brings us to proof of stake. Because we are on Ethereum, this is a proof of stake consensus, meaning that Ethereum can be staked. So staking plays a major role on Ethereum. And Ethereum itself, so far, 25% of its total supply has been staked. This means it's locked away from the circulating supply. This does two things. For one, it drives buy pressure. And secondly, it's securing the network. And Doing that brings stability because the higher your staking percentage, the more secure your network is and the more stable your cryptocurrency is. So staking plays a major, major role in this industry. The third issue we see in this space is that staking platforms that are out there, they're not sustainable. And actually, they're even adding more to inflation, just like we see this chart right here. And finally, to run an economy, you need transactions. Transactions are the key factor for an economy to run smoothly. And this is the challenge, is that transactions, which is volume, are not used efficiently. And we'll look at that into details. We were just highlighting the four major issues or challenges in the space. And uh, now we are going one by one, we'll be addressing them. So let's go with the first one, liquidity. To highlight the importance of liquidity, let's demonstrate something. Let's go to categories. And then under the category, you can search here stable coins. So once you have it, you categorize it now based on stable coins alone. Now, there's some factors that we need to pay attention here and look for. If you look at the market cap, the stable coin industry is sitting at 138 billion market cap. So it's quite small compared to the total market cap. And also you see that it's dominated mainly by two stable coins, which we famously know as Tether, USDT, 
and USDC. With that said, you see another form here, trading volume. This is another metric. So let's look at some things here. Let's first find out, based on its market cap, what percentage does do stable coins represent compared to the total market cap? So this is the first metric we need to look at. So if we do the math here, we take the 138 billion and we divide that by the total market cap up here, which is 1.97 trillion. And then we have to multiply this number by 100 to get the percentage. So it represents 7%. What this tells us is that based on the market cap of all stable coins, it represents 7% compared to the entire market cap of 1.97, close to 2 trillion market cap. Stable coins is still a very small niche, so there's a lot of room for growth still. Now, let's look at the second metric, trading volume. Like we said, for an economy to be running smoothly, what's important? Transactions. Transactions and trading volume are synonymous. Same thing. So now, let's do the same thing. Let's take the trading volume and then divide it by the total 24-hour trading volume for the entire market. So we take the 79 billion, 356, and we divide that by the total 24-hour volume for the entire market, which is 86 billion, 780. Okay, and then we multiply this by 100 to get the percentage. We're sitting at 91%. What this tells us is that a small niche of stable coins, which represent a seven, only 7% 7 of the entire market cap. However, if it comes to trading volume, they represent 91% of the trading volume from the entire market. This is huge. This shows us the importance of liquidity because the most traded cryptocurrencies are also the most liquid cryptocurrencies. This is because uh, USDC stablecoins, it's mandatory for them to be backed one-to-one. -one. So they're extremely liquid. So liquidity means trading volume. Those two go hand in hand. So this is very important to understand. Also, there's a metric here. You see volume to market cap ratio. What this is, is it's an indicator of liquidity. You see here, indicator of liquidity. The higher the ratio, the more liquid the cryptocurrency is, which would make it easier for it to be bought, sold on an exchange close to its value. The more liquid the assets are, the more volume, trading volume, the more the transactions become. Because this just means that there is more for traders to work with, to enter and exit the positions. And this is very important. So liquidity plays a major role. This is why two stablecoins account to 91% of the entire crypto market's trading volume due to their liquidity. So keep this in mind. This is very important. Liquidity goes hand in hand with volume, trading volume. The more liquid your asset is or your cryptocurrency is, the more volume it will generate. And to just bring this home, if it comes to Bitcoin, the indicator of liquidity is only at 2.15. So it's very low. This just shows you how illiquid Bitcoin is. And Bitcoin, keep in mind, is the number one cryptocurrency, as we all know. And the issue with Bitcoin is the Bitcoin maxis, they focus more on the price going up. But the real value doesn't lie in price. The real value is in liquidity. And this is exactly what we just highlighted. Let's look at it again. The one that is less liquid has a price of close to 52,000. It's sitting at a 2.15% volume to market cap ratio. This is our liquidity indicator, as we see here. So it's very illiquid, but because the price goes up, everybody's so fascinated, even though the liquidity, which is the real value, is low. The one that is more liquid is only sitting at $1. So price is irrelevant. What really counts is liquidity. And this is what this example that we just presented to you shows and highlights that the price is irrelevant. People focus on the wrong thing. You should focus on liquidity. That's the main thing. So now that we've covered liquidity, let's move to the second thing. Keep in mind, we identified that staking plays a major role and we need to understand that with it also comes a lot of inflation. Right now, if we do the same thing and go to categories and pick up uh, staking platforms, we see that it's sitting at a 38 billion market cap. So staking is in high demand. It's still also a young niche and uh, it's being completely dominated primarily by Lido. Lido is the number one 
liquid staking platform by far and its market cap shows you that it's at 2.8 billion market cap the second one is at 685 million market cap they are four times larger than the second competitor that's just to highlight staking now of course because we are in a proof of stake consensus a lot of applications have also their staking platforms built in like we say lido they are liquid staking platforms meaning you can stake your eth for example with them if you don't have 32 eth to be a validator and if you don't have the technical knowledge to run three softwares you can just go with lido maybe you only have half an eth then you can they'll pull all the eth together and they will do all the technical stuff in the background for you and in turn they will give you their own tokens and they also give you a synthetic version of ETH that you can use on other platforms. These applications, for example, Aave and Uniswap. Aave is known for lending. They're a lending platform. They have been, they're the oldest lending platform that have been around, but they also, of course, have staking capabilities. So you can stake the token. So is Uniswap. Uniswap is primarily known as a DEX, decentralized exchange. However, they also have staking capabilities. So let's look at these things more clearly. Inflation, like we saw, is a major issue. We've seen this before. For the past 100 years, we've seen how the US dollar, due to inflation and oversupply, has been just losing its purchasing power. So it's important that we don't fall into the same issues that we're already facing in the real world. So pay attention to this graph and you'll realize that it looks very familiar. It looks almost exactly like the one that we're facing right now. We're using the blockchain technology. So we need to do things differently. We can't adapt the failures or the flawed systems from the traditional financial system and then just bring them on chain. This won't work. It's not sustainable and it's one of the major challenges in the crypto space, also in the traditional market that we are facing. So this is something that is a major issue, inflation. And because their staking platform is not sustainable and because the tokenomics uh, is designed to issue more tokens, it causes this type of inflation. And this is something that we are all too familiar with in the traditional market. So this is something that needs to be addressed. And this doesn't just affect Aave, like we said, uh, Uniswap, same thing. You would think that it's the same chart, but this is now Uniswap. So, uh, but the same concept, you see them, they're inflationary and they just keep putting out more supply in the market and which just causes more and more inflation. This is a major issue in the space. So inflation is the second thing that is causing the same problems that we already are all too familiar with in the traditional market. And we made examples of the two most popular applications in the industry. You see here that even though they have the best utilities in the industry, Uniswap being the number one DEX, decentralized exchange, Aave being the number one lending platform. So they have great utility, but utility can save you if your tokenomics, the fundamentals are weak. And this is what we see here. They are causing inflation, similar to what we already know from the traditional markets that we've been experiencing for centuries. So this is the second issue, inflation. Now, we already discussed the other one is uh, staking. We said how important staking is. So a staking platform is supposed to be sustainable. This is another issue. With these staking platforms, they're issuing the same native tokens. So of course this drives inflation even more because once they see that the price is dropping, people will unstake and start selling on the market. This will cause a negative sell effect and this is why you see everything will just start dropping all the way. So staking platforms needs to be sustainable, meaning that not only are you supposed to not issue native tokens that will cause inflation, but at least even if you do that, it needs to be deflationary. A concept like that is, for example, with Ethereum. Ethereum issues Ethereum. If you stake Ethereum, you get more Ethereum. However, the difference with Ethereum is it's tying its usage, which is its volume, directly to its deflationary mechanism. So the more Ethereum blockchain is being used, the more deflationary it gets. So at least this is a way that you can counter inflation by causing the use, the adaptation, the more Ethereum is being adopted and used, the more applications are being built on it, the more deflationary it gets over time. So this is a concept that these other applications don't have and uh, that are lacking. So 
to have a staking platform, you need to also have a deflationary aspect, at least, if not scarce. This is how you should address this issue. So instead of inflation, you should be deflationary. And to take it even to the next step, you should be actually even scarce, especially for staking platforms, because out here, there are no scarce staking platforms. They all look like this. They're all inflationary. And this is what we are all too familiar with from the traditional market. We got now to the final aspect. Like we say, transactions play a major role and they run the economy. And this is our final and fourth challenge. You see how Aave, even though it has a large, a high volume, over 109 million in daily volume, it doesn't reflect that if you look at its chart because its usage, the volume is not directly tied to those three challenges that we just mentioned, which are illiquidity, inflation, and incentives, incentives for those who decide to stake. So its usage, which is volume, is not directly tied to all of that. This is the reason why you see the chart like this. And the final missing piece or the final challenge, which is transactions, the fourth one, being directly tied to those four challenges. This is the fourth issue. None of these platforms tie their usage, which brings this volume to those three challenges, lack of liquidity, inflation, and sustainable staking incentives. This is the fourth one. And we see it clearly here with Aave, and we also see it clearly here with Uniswap. They have 113 million in daily volume. However, it's not reflecting on the chart because their usage, their use case, their utility uh, is not directly tied to those three challenges, illiquidity, inflation, and unsustainable in staking incentives. So this is the fourth one. So now that we've clearly identified those four challenges, let's look at our ecosystem. Bullrun ecosystem is addressing those challenges that we face, all four of them. Bullrun is a utility-driven token and an, eco an ecosystem that specifically focuses on addressing four major challenges within the blockchain industry. So we took a solution-based approach as we developed the Bullrun ecosystem. The four pillars of solutions that we have is liquidity, the one that we just discussed, education, security, and social network. For the purpose of this video, we're going to limit it to liquidity alone. So with that said, let's go to our tokenomics. Tokenomics will help us to understand how we are addressing these four challenges that we face in the industry. And to put it in perspective, to achieve all of this and to address all these four key challenges, the Bullrun ecosystem developed three separate smart contracts. The Bullrun's token contract itself, then the dual staking contract, and then the minting contract for the booster NFTs. So let's start with liquidity. We identified how important liquidity is. We highlighted how stable coins only represent 7% of the entire market cap of the crypto industry. However, they represent over 91% of the entire volume generated in the entire market. So this shows you that liquidity is key. The deeper your liquidity is, the higher your volume will be. Liquidity and volume go hand in hand. We have a buy and a sell tax of 6%. And we are allocated half of that, which is 3% to liquidity on the buy and the sell side. So 3% will go towards liquidity to address the liquidity challenge that we're facing in the industry. And the obvious way to do it is through the taxes. However, the second way we're doing it is by, we allocate a 10% of BRL supply towards staking. So the 10% is being staked right now and it's being used to accumulate USDC distributions since we are giving out USDC distributions for those who decide to stake. And then we use those USDC to buy back and restake. Like we identified, staking brings stability to the ecosystem. And this is why we want to have this mechanism in place that not only will drive more liquidity, but it also restakes the buybacks and brings more stability to the token and to the ecosystem as a whole. So this is the second way how we generate liquidity. The third way is like we mentioned through the NFTs. These NFTs are utility NFTs, meaning that if you stake your BRL tokens, you are limited to 70% of your USDC distributions. However, if you decide to purchase and stake a maximum of five boosters, 
you'll be able to unlock 100% of your USDC distributions. And the revenue generated from the sale of these NFTs go directly to the liquidity pool. So this is the third way how we emphasize on building and sustain a healthy liquidity. Because like we understand, liquidity and volume go hand in hand. Now that we've discussed liquidity, let's go to the second challenge, which is inflation. So to tackle inflation, we have a burning mechanism. Our burning mechanism is very unique. It causes scarcity to the bull run token. And this is a great thing to have. Like we identified earlier, just to, as a reminder, our current monetary system is inflationary due to rising inflation in supply. And the only way to rejuvenate the monetary system is by printing even more. So this is just going to get worse and worse over time. So to tackle all of this, and as we see our largest, most used applications are also going that route. And so does Uniswap like we saw. So this is why we laid emphasis on having a burning mechanism and not just being deflationary, but actually being scarce. This is what we mean with scarcity. We started with a million tokens in total supply. However, because now we have allocated 1% on the buy and sell side towards burning tokens, we call it the true burn, meaning that it removes tokens from the total supply. As a reminder, we started with a million tokens in total supply. Now we have dropped down to 972,000 tokens. And this number will keep shrinking as long as there's volume. And because we focus on accumulating liquidity, liquidity and volume go hand in hand like we identified with the stable coins. Even though they have a 7% market share based on market cap, they represent 92% of the entire market based on volume. So liquidity and volume go hand in hand. So as long as vo there's volume coming in, this number will keep shrinking. This causes scarcity in supply. And there is no staking platform out there that is actually scarce. And this really sets us apart. Now let's go to USDC distributions. This is for our staking platform. For those who decide to secure our network and bring stability to the ecosystem, we incentivize them with USDC distributions. We don't give them native BRL tokens to avoid inflation. And as you see here, printing more of the fiat currency also causes a debasement or devalue of the purchasing power. And this is what we don't want here. This is why we chose to give out USDC distributions. Now, how does that work? Like we mentioned earlier, we have a smart contract, a staking contract, and let's look at that right now. If you go to holders, you'll realize that the number one wallet right now, this is our staking contract, and it's currently holding over 58% of the total supply. Right now, it's locked away and removed from the circulating supply. This number represents the amount of tokens in percentage that is locked away, that is staked into in the staking contract. And as far as numbers, this represents over 567,000 tokens that are staked and locked away from circulation. As we saw here, Ethereum is sitting at 25% that is already staked. This brings a lot of stability to the ecosystem and it also secures the network. Staking plays a major role and it also shows the trust that the, that the community has in the token. And nobody wants to stake a token that in the long run is inflationary because we all know the outcome. We have a hundred year history here that shows us what happens if you are inflationary and adding more supply into the market. This is what you see. And history repeats itself. We see it right here as well. So this is why we emphasize on being a staking platform that is scarce, meaning that instead of inflating the market, we are actually reducing the total supply and instead of issuing out our native BRL token, we are actually issuing USDC. Now let's look at this even closer. If you come here, you see this is the smart contract. You see here, this is a contract. It's a staking contract. It locks up the BRL tokens and also it accumulates USDC distributions like we just said. So for those who are staking, will be able to receive this USDC distributions. So those are the two things they do. Now, I want to clarify what I mean with locking. At all time, the stakers have full access to their tokens. They can unstake any time they want. No staking or unstaking fees, no time lock period either. And this is another thing that sets us apart. Like we said, 
it locks the tokens away on this smart contract and also it accumulates USDC distributions based on the volume. Now, talking about this, this brings us to the final point, like we discussed, transactions, the volume. We saw how these platforms have high volume. However, this volume is not directly tied to be a solution for inflation, for illiquidity or for sustainable incentives for the stakers. This is the fourth and final challenge that we are addressing in our ecosystem. So going back to the tokenomics, this is how we're addressing those three key challenges. Again, liquidity to accumulating liquidity in three different ways. Inflation, we are addressing it by being scarce. And USDC distributions, we are addressing the unsustainable staking platforms that are out there by not issuing our native token, but also being scarce with our total supply. So this is how we are addressing these three key challenges. Now, the fourth one, like we discussed, is transaction. The transactions, which is volume, is directly tied to these three challenges. This is how our smart contracts are developed. The volume is directly tied towards retaining liquidity, scarcity, and sustainable USDC distributions. And this is the fourth and final challenge that we are addressing. And this is how we are addressing them, by tying the volume directly to these three key futures, these are the challenges that we experience in the market. Let's recap. The current economy that we are in is debt-based economy. And the bull run ecosystem, it has liquidity-based economics. And other mechanisms that we apply are just to counter three other challenges that we are also facing besides liquidity. Liquidity is just one challenge out of the four that we are facing in the entire industry. But to make a point is that in contrary to being a debt-based economy, our ecosystem, our tokenomics are built to being liquidity-based, is running a liquidity-driven mechanism. If you're running on a debt-based monetary system, that causes inflation. With us, the volume, the usage is directly tied to retaining liquidity. We're also addressing the scarcity side of it and the sustainable incentives, like we said. So we are liquidity-driven to highlight our efficiency and how our transactions are directly tied towards liquidity retention, scarcity of supply, and USDC accumulation, let's do some calculation and show how our platform would be more efficient. So let's do the math. Just for the sake of math, let's make this even. This is 121 million, but let's make it 100 million flat in volume. Let's start with the bands. To calculate bands, we need 1% of 100 million. So if we take 100 million and we multiply this by 1%, we'll have a million dollars. This means that a million dollars worth of BRL is going to be burned and removed from total supply forever. Like we showed you here before, we started with a million in total supply. Now, if you come to EtherScan, you see that we have a scarcity, a scarce total supply, meaning with every single trade, this total supply keeps shrinking. So based on the calculations we made, a million dollars worth of BRL, and this is just on a one day volume, would be removed from the total supply. This means this supply will keep shrinking. This brings scarcity and scarcity is what you want in a store of value. If we go back here, we just calculated a burn for one day. I'd like us to move forward and understand how much that would be in one month. So that means 30 million worth of BRL token bans will take place within a month. And if we multiply further by 12 months, which will give us a year, we'll see a $360 million worth of BRL token ban. And this happens naturally with every trade. So assuming that we maintain 100 million in volume, just like we saw Uniswap here, it will allow us to ban 1 million a day, 30 million a month, and 360 million a year worth of tokens. And these tokens will be completely removed from the total supply, which will cause this total supply amount to decrease over time. Currently, we already banned more than 27,000 worth of tokens and they're completely removed from the total supply. So with that said, let's move on to USDC distributions. They're also 1%. So again, let's start with the million because it's the same 1% that goes towards USDC distributions. How we showed you here, we have a staking platform, which is our number one wallet right here. And if we go to the smart contract, our smart contract not just locks BRL tokens from circulating supply, but it also accumulates USDC tokens. 
So that means that based on our math, 1% goes towards USDC distributions. But based on our math, that will mean in one day, $1 million worth of USDC will be accumulated in this staking contract for those who decide to stake. Now, if we do this for the month, again, it will be 30 million. And for the year, it will be 360 million. Now, keep in mind, these are organic volume driven USDC distributions. As long as there's volume, these distributions are perpetual. So this is the beautiful thing about our ecosystem. We lay emphasis on sustainability. Now let's get to liquidity because this is very interesting. So let's calculate how the liquidity would be. Again, 1% over 100 million is 1 million. However, we are allocating 3% to liquidity. So we'll have to multiply this by three. And that will mean that in one trading day, based on 100 million in volume, $3 million worth of liquidity would be added to our liquidity pool. Let's find out how this will be in a month. We multiply by 30. This puts us at 90 million. If we want to know how much that is for the year, it puts us right above a billion dollars in liquidity. Let's look at who else has a billion dollars in liquidity in the entire industry. So currently, even though Bitcoin is close to 52,000, it still doesn't have a billion in liquidity. So within a year, maintaining the 100 million in volume, we would have achieved a liquidity that not even Bitcoin has in 15 years. So this is just showing you how effective, efficient and sustainable our ecosystem is and how these mechanisms that we put in place to retain liquidity to ban tokens and to accumulate USDC distributions for those who decide to stake. During this upcoming bull run, these are very important mechanisms to have in place. And uh, this is exactly what sets our ecosystem apart from everybody else. And this puts us at a place where we literally have no competition. So this video, its purpose was just to highlight what added value our bull run ecosystem brings and how we are setting ourselves apart by literally addressing the four key challenges we face in the industry. Lack of liquidity, inflation, unsustainable incentives for stakers, and fourth and final, not tying the usage, which is the volume, your transactions directly to those three key challenges we face in the industry. If you do that, it makes the ecosystem sustainable and you'll be able to scale it based on usage. So the more adaptation your platform gets, the more liquidity it accumulates, the more liquidity it accumulates, the more trading volume it gets, and the more trading volume you receive, the more USDC incentives that you get. So you see this positive flywheel effect that you get, and this causes everybody to win. Are you a trader? Are you a staker? Everybody wins. The traders benefit from the stakers because once the traders come in, they're not being sold on because the stakers are busy accumulating their USDC and the stakers also benefit because the traders keep coming in and out of their position and the traders benefit because the deep liquidity. So the more they trade, the deeper the liquidity and the more liquidity, even more volume comes and with the vo more volume, more incentives for their stakers. So everybody wins in this community. And instead of being a debt driven economy, now this makes us a liquidity driven economy because our liquidity just keeps getting deeper and deeper. And what you need in this financial industry are two things. You need credit, which is liquidity and collateral. And those are the two things that the bull run ecosystem has. They have the deep liquidity and you can use liquidity as collateral. And this is what really sets us apart in this industry. And this is the approach we took addressing the four major challenges within the crypto industry and also in the traditional market that we are facing. Use the blockchain technology for the good of the people. The saying goes that whoever has liquidity makes the rules. And as we saw here, we made the example here and we saw how only two cryptocurrencies, which happen to be stable coins and have deep liquidity, represent over 91% of the entire daily volume we, we see here. So this is very important to understand that whoever has liquidity makes the rules. And this is also the reason why the Monetary Authority of Singapore said that cryptocurrencies have failed the test of being digital money. And this is also why they say that stable coins, not cryptocurrencies, will be part of the financial ecosystem. And this is the reason why it's because they are actually liquid 
and they're the most traded cryptocurrencies in the industry. Even though they only represent a 7% of the market, of the entire crypto market, and it's mainly dominated by two stable coins, these represent over 91% of the entire volume. This shows you how important liquidity is. With that said, community, this is it for today. I hope this video will enlighten you and I hope it will be of great help to you to have a clearer and a better understanding of how our ecosystem is addressing those four major challenges, which is lack of liquidity, inflation, unsustainable incentives for those who decide to stake, and tying your volume directly to those three key challenges that we just discussed. That's it for today, community. I want to wish everybody a wonderful rest of their day and let's keep in touch.